Tridoc7 here, thanks for stopping by. Today we're going to get behind the sports medicine research. I'm going to reveal the secrets of recent data on caffeine supplements and show you how to race faster. I'm an emergency physician, avid triathlete, and author. Let's get started. So caffeine use in endurance sports. We're all familiar with caffeine and its effects. The data clearly shows that caffeine is beneficial to some extent in endurance events versus shorties, you know, sprints, basketball, 40-yard dash, things like that. So if you're a triathlete, marathoner, or ultra-endurance athlete, caffeine has some benefits in training and competition. I'll teach you about the timing of intake, recommended quantities of caffeine for success and trying to minimize side effects, sources of caffeine, which is pretty simple, we all know about that, and some of the expected benefits you can experience from caffeine. Moving on to timing, based on the pharmacokinetics, that's how caffeine is absorbed into the body, we know that within 30 to 60 minutes caffeine reaches its peak effect in the bloodstream. And so if you're thinking about your competition, you'll want to take in the caffeine at least 45 minutes prior to the gun going off. This will allow caffeine to peak uh, shortly after the start of the race and it has some prolonged effects. Usually by about four hours, 75% of caffeine is out of the body and so you can either redose with a gel or something mixed with your sports drink uh, or you can delay the intake of caffeine even closer to the start of a race to prolong its effects. There's a lot of controversy about the quantity of caffeine. Most of the data out there is on the amount of 1 to 3 milligrams per kilogram body weight. 1 to 3 milligrams per kilogram body weight. So 70, 70 kilogram uh, male, which would be a larger size triathlete, uh, that would be about 210 milligrams of caffeine. To put that into perspective, a cup of your favorite coffee, Starbucks, Dunn Brothers, Caribou, whatever, I like Dunn Brothers, has roughly 200 milligrams of caffeine in a 16-ounce drink. Sources of caffeine, we all know what that's about. If you want to know specifics about various sports drinks, supplements, goo products, beverages, etc., check out the blog or download the podcast on iTunes. I'm not going to bore you with all the nitty-gritty details of the specifics of each drink, but you can get a general idea of what you can experience uh, consuming, for example, a Coke, a goo gel, etc. So you'll need to take that into consideration when planning your total caffeine load. There's data out there about taking half before an event and then again re rebolusing during the event or spreading it out. Uh, the full details are found on the blog. And so the results, we know that caffeine improves endurance, decreases fatigue, and increases performance. Depending on the study and the event or activity, results have shown improvement of up to 6%, some studies 10%, and a few smaller studies, mostly in the cycling literature, show up to 12%. I've talked about this in other videos and articles, but fuel. Caffeine, along with carbohydrate consumption, results in more rapid carbohydrate uptake into the bloodstream, helps turn carbohydrates into a fuel source and there's also evidence that caffeine intake improves fat breakdown into energy so keep this in mind when you're considering longer events Ironman ultra marathon etc we all have been told that caffeine is a diuretic well this is true but is the data all that compelling the military is keenly interested in this obviously with soldiers in the Middle East and high ambient temperatures dehydration is a key factor and so they studied athletes and soldiers in various conditions and broke them down into groups consuming a little bit moderate or a lot of caffeine and the end result is after 24 hours they all peed the same that's right they all produce the same amount of urine and so even the groups that drank a lot of caffeine didn't didn't urinate any more than the group that drank a little bit so the end result of dehydration uh, it seems to be somewhat of a myth so my thought is Use common sense. Obviously, if you're sensitive to caffeine, you're not going to want to pick down a, two or three coffees before a race. If you're inexperienced with caffeine, start slow and move up, titrate up, experiment. Figure out what works for you, but do it in training. Don't wait till race day to try a new approach to caffeine. Subscribe to the podcast on iTunes. I'm not planning on boring you with a bunch of high-tech data and graphs. I'm going to distill the sports medicine literature, give you the most cutting-edge, up-to-date data on training, supplements, 
And my overall goal is to help you develop a heightened awareness of your body, improve your efficiency, your speed, and how to get the most out of your supplements and training. Stop by the blog and say hi at tridoc7.com. I'd love to hear your questions, your comments, your feedback, and so leave a comment below the video. Find me on Facebook and let me know what you think. And again, I just wanted to thank you for stopping by. Tridoc7.com. You can reach me at comments at Tridoc7.com. Stop by the blog, find me on Facebook, iTunes, or leave me a comment below this video. We'll see you next time.